there have been few filmmakers who have followed the trend and then there have been few who have broken stereotypes and become trendsetters themselves. Hailing from Assam, Kenny Deori Basumatari is one such filmmaker. He enriched the cinema experience for the style of storytelling. Kenny shot his first feature film with only a DSLR camera and it became an instant hit to the market. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Local Gongfu portrayed a wonderful alchemy of martial arts and situational comedy. And it is also one of the most stories from the region to go for a fan in the release. Today, he is a household name in his arm and commonly known as Charlie Da for the enactment of the lead role in Local Gongfu. Hello everyone, today we have with us Kenny Basumatari, actor director. Kenny Da, welcome to Euro Studios Presents in Ate Talks. Thank you, Ansika. Local Kung Fu released in the year 2013. Since then, it's almost been a decade, but it's yet so connectable to us, the entire region, especially Assam. So, what inspired you when you wrote the script? I've um, been practicing martial arts since I was a child, and um, I've done comedy since my school days. Um, in class 5, we did our first skit, and I like making people laugh. So, I went to Bombay in 2008, 8, 9 or so, and after working there for about 2-3 years, I realized that if I wanted to be a director, then I need to make um, something on my own. Because otherwise, the options would be to have to assist somebody for a long time, for 4-5 years. But I'm not of the um, gali chup chap sunne wala mizaj, mm -hmm. so that option was not for me. And the other option was to have Karopati parents and that also was not possible. So I decided to make something on my own. By then we had already made some Chota Mota fight videos and music videos. And so we thought if we can make say five, six good fights and place them in a good story, then we will have a feature film. And um, I was lucky that at that time the DSLR revolution was just starting. So we bought a DSLR and we put together our friends and family and wrote out a script that would suit the personalities of the people who were acting. And that's how we started the journey. Uh, looking into the details of uh, local Kung Fu, mm -hmm. uh, the dialect that you have been using, the comedy, it's uh, centric to our region, especially the Assamese mm -hmm. uh, culture. So uh, you plan to release it Pan India. So why was it like, did you plan it initially or did it just happen? We didn't really know what we were getting into. I, we just thought that we would make a movie that would be a kind of showcase for, for our team, for our skills. After making the film, we found out that the cost of releasing a film is quite huge. You have mastering costs, then you have for every hall, for every show, you have to pay a fee called the virtual projection fee. For example, your uh, film is showing in, let's say, Anuradha. There you have to pay, for every show, you have to pay a fee which is 1600 or 2000 rupees. I don't remember the exact number now. So if you have one show a day, you have seven shows that works out to um, about 10 to 14,000 per week. Mm -hmm. This is for one hall. So if you release your film in, say, 40, 50 halls, the total expenses of just the projection fee comes to around three and a half lakhs. And then you have the mastering costs. The mastering costs are 88,000 in UFO, 50,000 in Scrabble, blah, 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 lots of stuff. Main thing is, it would take at least seven, eight, nine lakhs to release the film. So we made the film in just one lakh, but we needed another seven, eight lakh to release it, which I didn't know. Uh, but then, uh, we were lucky uh, in the sense, I started showing the film to various people in Bombay and one such person who saw the film was Durla Borwa. He was working there in Deutsche Bank. Um, so he said that he would release the film. So he came on board and uh, he uh, took on the expenses of releasing the film and that's how it finally managed to come out. And um, 
I've started answering this question from somewhere, but now I can't remember what the original question was. Uh, like, why did you plan to release it pan India? Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, PVR, PVR Cinemas at that time had a program called Directors Rare. So, under the Directors Rare program, they uh, would pick good films, films that they liked and release them for in, um, in the metros where they would find some audience. And our luck was good in that, that was being run by Shila Ditya Bora. So me and Okhmiya guy, I called him up and then I gave him the film to watch and then he said he liked it and okay, let's release it. So it was because of him that the film managed to release in PVR in various cities. So Delhi, Bombay, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, we released in these cities, it was thanks to him. We had no plans of a pan-India release. We didn't even know how to release a film, but it was because of him and because of Dulabda that we managed to get the film out. So it just happened spontaneously? Yes, a combination of um, good luck. Uh -huh. <laughs> how do you go about with both acting, direction? If I'm doing both at the same time, it's a little bit of a task because as an actor, you have to take care of yourself also. Make sure that um, you've come shaved if you have to be shaved. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you're not sweating and um, make sure the hair is in the right place. Mm -hmm. So all these things have to be taken care of. And as a director, you're also running around quite a lot. Yeah. So you will end up sweating. You have to be careful with your costume also, make sure that it doesn't get dirty. So these things always come into play. And um, as a, when I act in my own films, I'm pretty critical of my own performance. I do as many takes as necessary until I feel okay, okay, now I've done it correct. So that is there. Otherwise, if I'm acting in somebody else's films, then it's a pretty yeah. chill thing. Mm -hmm. The main thing is to learn the lines and be ready with the lines and that's it. And in Bombay, especially, it's much more relaxed. You go to the vanity van, they do the makeup and then you wait for two hours. <laughs> and then they'll call you for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, do a shot, and then come back and again, another two hours. So, sometimes there are busy days, but most of the time, this is how it happens on a big set. So, um, on the other hand, I've directed also TV serials in Bombay. And when you direct, it's non-stop busy. Right from the point you get there till pack up, and director and DOP are non-stop busy throughout the day. Even during the breaks, you have to be thinking of What's the next scene? How do we shoot it? Where do we put the camera? Stuff like that. So it's quite of a tedious work. Um, doing nothing also can be tedious. <laughs> As an actor, sometimes when I'm just in the vanity doing nothing, I think Are, directing is better. And then sometimes when I'm directing and it's non-stop for two, three days going, I think uh, acting is better. <laughs> <laughs> So if I ask you, like, which one did you enjoy more, the acting or the direction part? I like both actually. Um, sometimes I like, directing is good because I can control everything. Everything is, I can say how things run. Acting is good because I can just go and chill, <laughs> do my part and then relax. So I like both. How do you feel about the whole piracy problem? I think people don't realize um, at, at, for a regional industry, especially piracy is a very, it's a very big um, problem because when a person pays to watch a film, they pay say 150 rupees, 100 rupees, buy a ticket and watch a film in the hall. Some of that money, 50 rupees, 70 rupees, whatever goes back to the producer. So if the producer gets back his investment, then he will make a new film. But if people pirate the film and spread it out for free, then the producer does not get his money back. And so he can't make another film. So this is the main uh, side effect of piracy. If the film's budget does not come back, then the producer does not invest in future films and one more producer says bye-bye to the film industry. So people, I guess this is the main thing to be aware of. Uh, what do you think can be done to curb this issue? Um, 
I guess awareness is uh, the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from people who are not aware, there are some extra Kamina people who will do stuff like record movies in the hall with their mobile phones and a strict action should be taken against them. It has been taken also. Um, when Ratnakor released, somebody had done something like this, uploading the film on Facebook Live or whatever. And so Jotin Borada, he went to Gitanagar police station and filed an FIR and all. And did a Facebook Live also right from the Thana. So, strict action is necessary for such people. So, when the big budget films release, uh, it is observed that they are often taken off the original cinema. So, what do you have to say about that? This was quite a uh, big issue for us also. But then, with uh, Mission China and Kansen Jonga and Ratnakor, so all these three films have completely defeated whatever Hindi films were releasing at the time. When Mission China had released Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was also releasing, it became completely in Napa time in front of Mission China. And then Houseful 4 or 3 or whatever it was, was releasing at the time of Ratnakor or Kanchenjong, I forgot which, but Houseful 4 shows were reduced and Ratnakor shows were increased. So, um, it depends on which film audiences want to see. If audiences want to see an Okomiya film, then they will go for that only and the halls will themselves increase the number of shows of an Asmi's film. So it all, it's all in the hands of the Janta. So how far do you feel that the OTT platforms are being helpful for our regional cinema industry? It's been very good because uh, when you... Two factors. One is uh, if the people running the OTT, if they have good sensibilities and they want good content, then good content can get made. So that way I've made a romantic comedy for real drama. It's called Tomorrow Pet Khyat and the response to it has been very fabulous. Uh, real drama themselves, they launched in 170 countries, but demand was uh, so much from other countries also that they've had to increase the number of countries. So it just goes to show that Asmi's people are spread out all over the world. Um, so that way, the fact that they let us make good content and provided us with a decent enough budget for it, that really was good because um, just after COVID, we had work last year. The other thing is, when you make a film only for halls, there's a big risk that budget has to come back. That's number one. That has to come back in the case of OTT also, but um, when it comes to halls, you have to spend on the release also, mm -hmm. the projection fee and all the mastering costs that I've already talked about. And you also have to pay for publicity. Mm -hmm. So in case of working with an OTT, that is not my headache. Mm -hmm. It is entirely up to them how much publicity they want to do. Mm -hmm. So that is also a big burden of the filmmaker's chest. So that way, um, Real Drama has been a big help for us. Um, I'm going to make a sitcom also for them now called Kikwa Dosti. <laughs> so um, hopefully, yeah, uh, hope the other OTTs also up their game and come up with good stuff. And uh, that way, a healthy balance of theatres and OTT is good for everybody. How was your overall experience in uh, working in Bollywood? So I haven't worked very much. I've worked in what four or five films in Bombay, and it's um, I've worked mostly as an actor there. So I've directed TV, and uh, I've acted in those films. And like I said, it's been um, as an actor. It's like I said, you wait for two hours and then go for fifteen minutes and then again. So it's been fun and. Most of the directors I've worked with, they know exactly what they want. I worked with Debakar Banerjee on Shanghai, Tigmanshu Dhulia on two films, Yara and Ragdesh, and both of them, they know exactly what they want the actor to do. So it is my job to do what they want. Then I worked in a Malayalam film also, called, it's on Amazon Prime, called Kamara Sambhavam. I played Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose in that as well. So there, the director's working style was a little different. So he said, okay, this is the scene. This is your space. You 
show us how you want to do it. So then I had to figure out the blocking and movement and everything. Mm -hmm. So that was another way of working. And the um, good thing about working over there is, I mean, in bigger industries is that is the professionals and people come on time. Mm -hmm. Things are done on time. Everybody is sincere about their work. Because if you're not sincere, then they won't call you next time. Okay. So, um, but then our industry is also getting to, is get, being quite professional nowadays. I worked on three Okomiya films. We also quite efficient that way now. Uh, so Kenida, if you were uh, not into acting or direction, which career would have, like, you would have chosen? Most likely it would be something to do with writing. I've written one novel and if I wasn't into acting or direction, I probably would have written more and um, maybe done something academically in the English language, maybe, not sure. <laughs> On the days when you are not engaged hmm. in your professional work, how do you like to spend your time? Usually, I go for martial arts practice and then uh, I would probably cook. I cook either lunch or dinner once a day and um, watch something or read something, I guess, or maybe do a little bit of writing. So, yeah, that's what it would be. Do you agree with the massive change uh, in the way that people are perceiving cinema or movies these days? I guess it's got to do with the overall education levels of people. Um, when we were younger, when we were in the 80s, 90s, Mithun and Jitendra and uh, these films, so action scenes, Mitunda would do a backward jump from here to the top of the wall and when we were kids we were like wow 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 and now hey, kya hai? so yeah things have changed people's overall education levels are up and sensibilities are also up and since because of OTTs people have seen so much of good content worldwide so um, standards overall are improving and therefore yeah things will get go up um, Kenida, any two recommendations that you would like to give, like three movies that people should watch? Uh, rather than um, just individual movies, I think it's kind of like bodies of work. Um, three directors, among the three directors that I really love, many of course, but um, I, the first time I was really aware of uh, strong director would be David Fincher. So, um, Fight Club, Seven, Zodiac. David Fincher's films I watch again and again. And the kind of, um, the way that he presents his stories is worth studying again and again. So then, um, Jackie Chan, I believe in studying a lot for action. Watch any of Jackie Chan's films, the ones made by him, not the ones made by Hollywood directors. Um, of course, we can keep Rush Hour here because he had control of the action scenes. Action especially is one thing where nowadays we'll see, not nowadays anymore, thanks to John Wick, but um, say you look at films like The Bourne Supremacy, The Bourne Ultimatum, they shake the camera around for nothing and it's very really confusing and there's like 300 cuts per second. It's like one punch, cut, punch impact, another cut. It falls down, one more cut, table breaks, one more cut, reaction shot, one more cut. But if you look at Jackie Chan films, everything happens in one clean shot, in one wide shot. And they'll do 10, 15, 20 techniques in one shot and you can clearly see everything. The camera is not shaking. So that's where Tom Cruise does a good job and the John Wick films also have done a good job in showing you clear action where you can see what exactly is going on. So um, these things, these uh, two directors I would highly recommend. And then um, another director whose work I really like and who doesn't get mentioned enough is Matt Reeves. He's made the uh, 
Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for Planet of the Apes. And each of these films, the storytelling is so strong. It's, there's a very uh, clearly defined spine to the story and you want to see what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next and uh, great visuals and creating fantastic moments in that story. So I'm really excited for the new Batman film because it's directed by him. In this new Batman film, in the trailer, we can also see that there's a shot where one guy comes to attack Batman and Batman hits him like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all within the same shot. In the previous films, we would have had six, seven cuts in between, but this is all clean in one shot. So I'm really excited for this film. So I guess these are my three recommendations, David Fincher, Jackie Chan, Matt Reeves for now. Uh, as we have come towards the end of our interview, mm -hmm. a message that you would like to give away to our viewers? Um, the main thing that I go around saying uh, is that uh, Assam needs more halls. That's the number one thing. We need to have more and more theatres. And the second thing is, uh, I always request audiences to watch films, um, Okhomiya films in the first four days. Because depending on the first four days performance, the theater owners decide whether to give the film a second week or not. So if people think hey, we'll watch it later, pass out some, whatever, that, uh, is, um, that creates a little bit of a difficulty in renewing show timings. So that's, my, that's the main thing, watch films in the first four days. Thank you for coming to our show, Kenida. Thank you, Ansika. Thank <laughs> you.